Hey guys, this is Travis and Kyle with Beyond Bipolar Blog. We're just heading up to church to celebrate some birthdays. But anyway, today's topic is going to be should you force someone to get a medication? And that sounds really horrible because if you actually try to say it that way, it's going to really piss the person off that you think needs medication. I was at that state of time where I really did not want to be on medications because for a good solid year, I was trying these these antipsychotics and the side effects were horrible. The akathisia may be, be suicidal and some of them may be just get into a state of mind where I just wanted to commit suicide itself. And another time I struggled with dystonia. There's just a lot of freaking side effects that I hate and I, and I dislike medications with a passion. I'm right now at a different state of mind, but I just want you guys to know that you should never ever force someone to go on medications. Now there's ways to be able to encourage someone. Encouragement is way different from forcing someone because my dad always used to say and infer, did you take your medicine when I'm not having a good day? And it always trigger me and make me really, really upset. So you don't want to mention that. You just, you kind of want to give hints. For instance, when I was in a relationship, she forced you though so hey again this is kyle with karina dot or uh hey this is kyle with beyond bipolar blog so this topic is actually a pretty interesting topic today because somebody a cad reached out to me saying that she knows someone with npd which is narcissistic personality disorder and bipolar and mixed episodes which pretty much entails rage fits anger aggression confusion that kind of intense kind of stuff. So anyway, this is a really good topic. Travis actually originally already talked about this earlier, but the mic didn't work. So hopefully we can work it out this time. Go ahead. So anyways, back in 2012, I really was passionately against medications. And however, I had my own agenda. I wanted to try to make a relationship work with someone. However, that was also very bad because things could gaslight really, really quickly if things go wrong. So you never ever, if you as a patient, you never ever want to use someone as a reason for you to get on medication. Because if it goes bad, you're gonna end up blaming them. You never ever want to do that. You want to have a relationship with yourself, not anyone else. This is you, only you. And the only way you're ever, ever gonna get better is if you try something for yourself. Don't ever do it for someone else. Now you can also be motivated. Like for instance, yeah, you want to get in a relationship. Yeah, my my marriage is suffering or my relationship is suffering because of the way I act, the anger, the rage, the depression, the mania, the just the impulses that you end up having and then end up ruining a relationship. Don't you think relationships are actually a trigger for people with mental health issues and maybe it being in a relationship isn't a very good method. Well, what are you going to do when someone's married? I don't know. It's See, that's question. the thing. If you're married, then you don't want to escape that. You want to try to make things work. And you have to be in your own frame of mind where you want to make things work. You can't have some of them have someone say, oh, this person wants to force me to get medication because they say it'll work for me. But you have to encourage yourself to say that it'll work for you. You have to say that, yeah, I want to make the marriage work. You can't say this, yeah, this person wants to make this marriage work and thus I have to get a medication. That is really a bad perspective that you want to avoid having. Now, I ended up having that perspective for a long time and I would blame her all the time because she'd always tell me I had to get medications. And I was a really, really bad person. I was just really full of anger, rage, impulse control. Uh, sexually deviant, a lot of things that were really kind of disparring for a decent relationship if you want to form it with someone. So, this in a nutshell happened in 2012. I ended up going to a partial hospitalization because someone wanted me to get medication, which was the relationship, and the guy just said, well, you're bipolar, you need to try lithium, and I was really, really against it, but then all of a sudden I decided, well, fuck it I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try it and see what happens and I've been on it for a good five or six years and once you get over that hurdle saying you don't want to be on medications things are fine now there was actually a period in time before that where 
I was actually set to see a psychiatrist, but I ended up ditching it, ran away from the psychiatrist because I didn't want to be on medications. So I understand totally from that perspective, you don't want to be on medications. Actually, there was a commenter on my recent YouTube saying that antidepressants are, are bad for you. And to be honest with you, it was Zimbabwe, the antidepressant that saved me from ever going back into a group home. It saved me from continuing to have to go see a, a therapist, an ILS worker, an arms worker, things like that. I'm doing pretty fine just because... So I want to ask that guy, then what's the solution then? Do you just want to be depressed and die? It's my opinion. Now, the thing is, there's nothing wrong with encouraging someone. Like, for instance, you don't want to say, hey, you need to get on medications. You're, you're, you're acting like a horrible person. You just got to say, hey, you know... If you really want to talk to someone that is experiencing the things that you have, I have someone that has actually been through it all and actually has found a way, a solution to live a more healthier, productive life. And that's what you want them to do. You don't want them to go to you for someone if you don't have the experience. You don't want to go have them for you to mentor on something you're not knowledgeable about. You want to have someone that uh, that's already has been through the ringer that can mentor the person that is struggling that's the person you really want to encourage them to get closer to not someone that doesn't have knowledge because for instance uh, this is how it works you're you're a fish that wants to climb a tree and you're the tree and the person's a fish it ain't gonna work you gotta find someone that swims with that the current with like someone that actually went through the mental illness Maybe through the anger, the rage, the mania, the depression, through it all that they can at least get a perspective. That's the thing that you want them encouraged to have them to see. And it's very, very difficult because they don't want to fix themselves at all. So it really, really sucks. Sometimes you have to get a point in your mind where you've been through it all. You've been cycling over and over and over again where you're at the all time low and you either, hopefully you don't kill yourself but you're at a point where you say, hey, maybe I need to try this medication route. Hey, maybe I, even though I've been through all these medications, they never, ever, ever work, that I got to try again. And, you know, I've been on 30 different medications. Come to me if you've been on over 30 medications and tell me meds don't work. But if you've been under 30 medications, in spite of all the hardship, I had post-traumatic stress from akathisia of the antipsychotics, the, just the the attempts where I would just experience the spell of suicide ideations. Shit like that happens. However, you got to get over You, It's really harmful, harmful to say you got to get over it. But in reality, you got to get over that hurdle to tell yourself, hey, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying to take that next step. I'm going to try to get myself to a position where I want to try something that I want to get things better, that I want to be more hopeful. And you can't say meds are the overall or not for all. You just got to try to maybe encourage yourself, not convince yourself. You got to try to encourage yourself to try to at least do something that may or may not work. It's better to try and know than not try at all and realize it does work in the end. Now, medications is not the only route. There's like other support systems. There's group therapy. There's independent living skills worker, there is arms worker, uh, and there's actually therapists. There's group therapy. There's going to the hospital, doing some classes there. There is in ERTS, which is intensive residential treatment, where you are in a group home for a while and they can at least regulate your medication. Another option is partial hospitalization, is which you do a three week program and there's an on-call psychiatrist there that can help regulate your medications. That's what I ended up doing. And you know, the thing for creative individuals is that you will lose that high and the high is what makes you good. But remember that high turns to low. So that's not helpful. And I also complained to my relationship that I wasn't sleeping, that I call her at random times, that I just get really angry for no apparent reason. It, it ruined my relationship, not only with the, the relationship that I was dating in, but also my family. So 
You have to realize that, hey, you're hurting people. Hey, you're feeling bad. You got to understand and be mindful of this perspective that, hey, things are not going away. I want to make things better. I, they're, they might say things that they tell you to get a medication. They might say things, hey, if you don't, make, if you don't do something with, with your life, I'm going to divorce you. You can't just get into that portion. Yeah, it might encourage you to go on medication, but you can't use that in a, uh, uh, all for one thing to let them know that, hey, the only reason why I'm getting on medication is for this person. You don't ever want to do that because you end up gaslighting that person to be horrible. Is there anything you want to add? Yeah, so what did Nancy do right that wanted you to go on the med soul? She didn't really do anything right. Oh, I thought she, she just, did. She, you know, I hate, I hate to say it. She kind of pestered me and pestered me until I decided so it worked. So that's what you recommend then. You know, pestering is probably better than doing nothing, to be honest with you. Nothing shows that you don't care at all. Pestering means you at least care. Now, pestering is a horrible word. I'd rather use encourage. Like I said before, you got to try to find them a mentor that actually is experienced, that actually been through the ringer. And I think the easiest spot to find that is the hospital. So, so if, you think that would be the number one go to then, the hospital? I want to so say, if yeah, someone's going not, all irate, they don't want to go on meds, they won't listen. Do you think there's a lot of you know, if someone and is in, selfishness? If someone is in the harm of themselves, they can actually bring them to the hospital on a, not a voluntary basis, but an involuntary basis. So you have to realize that if someone is ex- experiencing suicidal ideations and you want to report it, that's probably the best thing you should be able to do at the moment. Now, for someone that might be experiencing like these things, my brother has been telling me this lady is is trying to encourage, not encourage, he's trying to tell him to get on medications and he won't do it. I've been there and, you know, it's going to take some time. Time is probably the number one factor you have to try to realize is that it's not going to be a night and day thing where they might want to try medications. It's going to be a long-term factor in which they've been up and down, up and down. It's going to cycle until they just can't take it anymore. They realize, hey, it's ruining everything. That, hey, I want, I'm want, i getting a divorce. That, hey, the relationship's not working with family and friends. It's going to get to that point where they might realize that things are not going the way it intended to go. Do you think it's selfish? Or it's because they're afraid or it, scared? It probably has to do a lot with fear because... A lot of the people that have tried medication is that they experience side effects. And really for those bad that didn't want to, and for those that didn't want to try medications, they're in denial and believe that they're fine. And I think that's where that person's at. They're in denial, and denial is something where you don't want to admit something because it makes you weak. And I feel this person is just trying to. You know, tell this person off that, hey, life's fine. I don't want to deal with you. My life's good. I don't want to take medications. They're telling you because they're scared. They're telling you because they're in denial. So, you know, you got to try to encourage them to see someone that might be through it all, that might experience the same thing you did. There's plenty of people on Facebook that may or may not be willing. Hopefully they're willing to at least try to enlighten you for a while. And I think sometimes it's not helpful to to be angry at them, to point their finger at them, hey, you're a horrible person. You can't do that. You gotta try to encourage them in in the right frame of mind. The reality is mental illness is a real disease. So in a way, like what I believe, I don't really believe that there's really bad people out there. There's bad people with good qualities and there's good people with bad qualities. Deep down, people with narcissism, people with mental health issues are deep down hurting inside. Now does that, answer, suffering. Now does that answer your question or is it not good enough? Well, I don't know. Like what happens if you see some random person and if you're dating someone that was going irate and... Well, the thing and is, if that person is toxic, you should not be with that person, to be honest with you. In the end, people are responsible for their own health. And if they end up committing suicide, yeah, it's a horrible thing, but that is their choice, you not think, yours. You should not be guilty because they did something that was horrible. Do you, do you think relationships trigger mental health issues, or is that a different topic? 
it can be good or bad. It depends on how good the person is. And it's not a toxic relationship. How encouraging are, or how belittle they you, they belittle you. So it really depends on that person. Everything's in an individual perspective. So, not sure if there's anything else you want to add. I just feel like I pretty much said you, what you I spoke feel like. Like 20 minutes. What else did you talk about last time? 25 minutes. Well, I just I just try to tell them that hey, you know, life sucks sometimes, and you have to realize that if you really want to make things better, you need to at least try to try to take medications. You need at least need to try something different. You need to at least try to get up and and be hopeful and try something again. You at least have to be mindful and realize and make that actualization that hey, things are not going well for me. Hey, I'm unhappy. Hey, things are really really tough right now, and I want to get through it. So. You have to try to encourage yourself to remain somewhat positive and be hopeful. Hope is a big thing when it comes to mental health because if you have no hope, you might end up wanting to commit suicide. And that's a horrible thing to do, yeah. But at the same time, you have to realize if you have friends that are suicidal, you want to try to encourage them to see things differently. Yeah, encouragement is really, really important, but you never want to belittle them. Belittling is something you want to avoid. And it never works. So you can't just say for someone, hey, take your meds. Hey, you need to be on medication. You need to say, hey, like, hey, man, I know someone that's been through it all. And I want to encourage you to talk to this person. Or say, hey, I met this person. And I know this person that has been through it all. And realize that, hey, these medications might actually benefit from you. That's a lot better than forcing someone to go on medications. Now, they're not always going to listen to you right away and they may never ever listen to you right away but how would you feel if you end up just doing nothing and they end up committing suicide that's probably the worst guilt trip you can do but if you at least been trying and trying to encourage them to take medication that is something that you can definitely benefit from so the reality is i want to encourage people that are actually have mental health issues the person that brought up with the fact that that one he could be abusive sometimes people do act abusive and even abusive people deep down are hurting but i wanted to mention that it's important to try to learn and develop empathy because if you continue a destructive route your actions do have consequences in the end and what is happiness i don't think it's fighting and arguing and getting all pissy all the time it really is you just want to get along and deep down people just want peace of mind so I encourage people to look outside themselves, not just their own internal uh, compass, but also trying to care a little bit about other people. Again, listen to others, take it with a grain of salt. Don't let it tear you, your whole ego down, but learn to just, it, it's life is trying to be a little bit better person being peaceful. So it's not that they're trying to attack you. Deep down, you still have your own choice. And yes, there are some meds, bad meds out there, but if you really want to get along with people, if you really want to feel better, I know there's a lot of people that are against meds, but what are some solutions that you guys have aside from the med route, aside from going to therapy, aside from DBT? What methods have you done to help resolve issues in your personal life? Please let that us know in the comments below. Anyways, guys, we're going to head up to the church right now. It's almost been like how long? It's been like a good 25 minutes or 30 minutes. So I want you guys to know that try to encourage that person to try to take medication. Try to encourage that person to go to therapy. Try to encourage that person if they're suicidal to go to the hospital. And there's a it might be a three-day vo vo involuntary hold. So... That could be beneficial and then it might actually make them realize that hey things are not working you know they there's a ton of support out there you just have to be willing to go out and find it as the individual who is experiencing such issues and for those individuals that are on my 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 youtube account commenting yeah i understand that medications can be bad but for me they've actually done something to help benefit my life they kept me from not committing suicide. They kept, they kept me at least having a more productive life and a more satisfied life. More stable life, and he's not having suicidal ideation. That's, the reality is, 
like I was mentioning before, it's been almost a, a, a year since I loaded this sabotage video, which was my depiction of not a, a, the person that suffers from mental health issues, but actually the family members and loved ones. So try to think about all your loved ones of not just bettering yourself, but bettering other people. So there's a lot of frustration with that, especially when you have a loved one that wants to die and you feel like there's no control and it's really hopeless and depressing at times. So, but try to hang in there. It's gonna take time. Yes, not all meds work, but watch our our last three or our last four med videos about uh, antipsychotics, antidepressants, and anti anxieties. I really do think antidepressants are probably the least intrusive. So, if you're really afraid of the bad side effects, I do recommend. Uh, we do recommend taking an antidepressant first and obviously getting a therapist first. At least talk to someone first and then go on a really small dose and get a good psychiatrist with that. So again, it's a tricky issue. Deep down, it's up to the, the person that's struggling itself and sometimes maybe they just have to crash and burn. Maybe eventually people will end up dropping them, including uh, all our friends and loved ones. Maybe that will be the the kitten kick in the butt, so to speak, for them to want to change and better themselves. Deep down, people are responsible, have to be responsible for their own actions and what they want to do. And maybe sometimes doing it alone is the best lesson. So, but we want to encourage you that meds have an option so you don't have to leave a relationship that could be a pretty good relationship and you could feel a lot better with your, your yourself anyways yeah. that's it guys so please like comment subscribe and hit the bell button if you're interested in future videos i hope you learned something try to encourage someone that might be suicidal let them know that you're there for them let them know that you're there to listen and i think that's a big thing you can do is just listen to them and Maybe you can say, hey, I know you're scared. Hey, I know you're in denial, but I know someone that actually found a way to make things work. You just hopefully got to try to get yourself in a point and hopefully that they'll realize with themselves that they want to actually better their life for themselves, not for someone else. Deep down, you also have to be healthy. So if you're a person that has mental health issues that is dealing with someone's mental health issues deep down you have to take care of yourself first and foremost but the power of love compassion patience can go a long way and things can change i mean i was very hopeless with my brother back then i didn't think there existed any help or hope in the end he's the one probably pretty stable right now and i'd say he's probably sometimes more more peaceful than i am at, at times which is great and it just proves that hope exists, better times exist. Sometimes leaving ca can be a choice, but sometimes staying can also help too. But it's all up to the person and the individual and, and what things are they're dealing with. But deep down, things can change. Sometimes if you stick it through, you never know. You might find a gold mine. Take care, everybody. Take care of your loved ones. Take care of your health. All right. Bye, guys.